Aloha everyone. We're going to start our combined SCC, PTSA, and our two amazing seminars uh, this evening. We really appreciate you coming. I know the information that you're going to glean tonight is going to be something that you're going to be able to take with you uh, throughout the school and the community. It's going to be very helpful. Uh, when you have conversations with other people. Before I go any further, I want to introduce myself. My name is Karen Welsh, and I'm the Title I uh, parent slash guardian involver. So how many of you received my emails? Raise your hand. Awesome, awesome. So we're very connected. I'm your bridge between school and home, and then back again. And I really appreciate all the parents and guardians as you help your students through their first career in life and hopefully not their last. So we're going to, to go ahead and get started uh, with the community meeting. And um, I have the slideshow over there, someone could click it. <laughs> Thanks, Luke. Luke's coming, it's out of my, out of my finger reach. There, I need a clicker. Um, I, I want to introduce some people to you that are here tonight. I want to introduce our wonderful Sasa, and he brought his Ohana with him, and that's Mr. Brandon Respizio. Over, right back over there. Awesome. And I want to introduce our wonderful um, vice principals that really do a lot for this school and shoulder a lot of burden, and we so appreciate you. So I want, uh, they're in the back, it's Miss Heidi Hanna. Mr. Jason Trimble and Ms. Erin Williams, who are back there. Welcome. And of course, our illustrious principal, Robert Dirks, who is an amazing human being. Um, so we appreciate that. So our agenda tonight is we're going to start off with a um, social media awareness uh, presentation by Rachel Pedro. Right, right here. I think it's going to be um, very enlightening for all of us. That is um, going to be followed by a PTSA meeting. It's going to be a short general meeting. So if you're a PTSA member, you're probably going to take a vote tonight. Um, so there is an action item that it will be very short. Followed by our SCC community meeting number two, which will be led by Lucy Ramirez, which is the chairperson and also a student at the school. Um, so she'll lead that portion of the meeting. And it will be followed by Electronic Smoking Devices Awareness by Sally and Chetta. And I don't know if you saw this week on, on the um, news, but a guy was holding his vape pen or whatever you call them, and it blew up in his face and totally disfigured him, blew out all his teeth. And so I was thinking, oh, I'm so glad we're having this because there's so many health risks, but it's also like a danger to even have it in your pocket or to have it up to your face. So I'm so glad this is such an appropriate subject. As I see many junior hires walking down the street vaping and high schoolers in the cars with their parents vaping, so we got to get the message out about that. So this is our agenda for this evening. Okay, right now we're going to start yeah, we're going to start with the social media awareness presentation, and we just want to welcome Rachel Pedro. Thank you. Is it okay if I um, introduce this? Thank you. Hello, everybody. Hello. Sorry, I'm, I'm a mover when I talk, so uh, that's why I have to come up from behind because I'm probably not something over. Um, thank you for allowing me to come and speak tonight. Um, I, I enjoy giving this talk because it's relevant, it needs to happen, it's important, and um, it's kind of uh, enlightening to some. Some people are well knowledge in social media and others are kind of like half-half. So it's always good to have this conversation just to kind of keep up and be aware. Um, the reason why I call it keeping it real is because it's going to be kept very real tonight. Um, and so I hope you can handle some of my um, honesty in when I'm expressing and talking about some of these um, social media that's out there because this is what our students are hearing, are participating in, 
are seeing. And so I believe it's just as important, I know there's students in the room, but also for the parents in the room to understand um, the entirety of, of different media apps and, and what's involved and in them. Um, okay, go ahead and get started here. Okay, so first I'm gonna go over some of these apps and I wanna just give you a little commercial. I'm gonna talk about some of these apps vaguely and just because your student necessarily or your, your youth has this app doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing what I'm saying these apps are used for. But I just want you to understand what a lot of people utilize the apps for, just to give us more knowledge. Kids can use um, as a messaging app instead of their 
instead of their texting, their regular texting app that comes with their phone, they can utilize all these other type of free messenger apps to um, stay in contact with friends. How about this one? This is probably my favorite. Me personally, I just enjoy it. I love the filters. I think they have excellent filters, way better than Instagram's filters. Um, and it's fun, right? But what is the what was the misleading thing with Snapchat when it first came out? Anybody know? They thought it disappeared. Okay. So we had a lot of challenges with youth because with Snapchat, what happens is you when you make a short video, right, of yourself, it's like I don't know, ten seconds, right, and you send it, and the person who receives it can watch it for ten seconds and then it's gone, right? So you think, well, does it matter what I put because it's only ten seconds long and they can't replay it? Well, now people have learned you can save it, right? You can um, view it again, right? So that has changed things. But initially, there was a lot of inappropriate type things um, going on with Snapchat, still is. But like I said, there was this whole misleading concept that if it was on Snapchat, it couldn't be saved and it couldn't be reset. So now most students know that that's not, that's not true. Okay. What about this one? WhatsApp. Okay. This one is again used. You can actually call on this one as well. It's not only a messaging app. It's also you can also use it to call okay. instead of your regular phone. And you say, why would someone want to use that app, right? Instead of using their regular phone, because if people don't know, I'm not going to say that kids do this, but if they don't want people to know who they're calling who they're texting, they can use it in an app that isn't one that's monitored, right? Because when you get your phone bill, or whatever it might be, you can see what numbers have been called, you can see what numbers have been texted, whatnot. You don't see the history of the app, right? So this is a way for them to communicate with other people when they don't want, they don't just know who they're staying in contact with. How about this one? Huh? Tinder, yes. Tinder. Now I want you guys to know, when I asked the kids this, last year when we were doing this in Hearing Their Stars period, okay, so they're all yelling out, Tinder! They know exactly what these apps are, okay? So I just want you to, to know that. Um, so this Tinder is location-based, okay? It's also known as a mobile dating app, okay? Uh, it's, it's, they, they've kind of simplified it down. So basically, other people who have this app, who are basically looking to connect with somebody, um, possibly date them, or other things, they can go on this app and you can see who's close to you. And depending on whether you swipe right or swipe left or tap on it, depends on whether you, you basically either delete app, not into that person, or you click and it will like send them a message like, hey, this person wants to chat with you or hook up with you, yada, 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 okay? It is a simplified dating app, okay? Kids are on it. It's known, um, if you look it up, it's known as a lot of kids as the, like the hookup app in terms of like uh, a lot of people have used it for sex. Um, and so they're going to be, be raw, I'm going to be very real, okay? Um, but they use it, you know, for sex, for substances, for various different things to make connection and contact with people, um, to go to parties, all different, all different types of things. It can be used for good purposes, don't get me wrong. Like I said, just because your student may have this app doesn't mean they're using it for these purposes. I'm just letting you know that with the research, um, that we're doing and, and taught on these, these presentations that I go to regularly that talks about social media, this is the kind of stuff that the apps can be and sometimes are being used for. Um, how about this one? Kick, right? This is, again, another messaging app, okay, um, that can be used. It is the most popular sexting app, okay? So it is a very popular app used um, for sending inappropriate pictures, things like that to others. Like I said, it doesn't mean your student is necessarily using it for that, but it is a very popular site for those things. It became a popular app 
for those things. Um, it goes by usernames, not by telephone numbers. So when you have an account, okay, um, it's not being tracked. You know how a lot of like messaging apps they use your telephone number, right? I mean your, your cell phone number too as your user account. So with the Kick app, you create a separate user account. So if your phone number changes, right? Let's say your let's say your youth has an incident where something's going on and you feel like somebody's inappropriately using it, you know, towards your towards your youth, and you have them like you change their number or something. Just so you know this app is connected to username, not phone number. So even though it gets sent like a text or like a message, um, it's username based, not cell number based. Okay. It's also less secure. Okay, it, it, all of the, the apps have to go through like kind of a security rating, and this one came in lower than like Facebook, Snapchat. Now we already know in terms of security, right? Those things aren't very secure, right? There's always a Facebook hack happening, right? And so this app came in as less secure than even those apps. Okay, how about this one? This one is known as Musical.ly, okay? So this is the one where you see students, right? They like lip singing two parts of a song, right? So the real person is singing and they're lipping and they're dancing to it, whatnot, okay? Having a lot of fun with it. Um, that's pretty much, I mean, you can, you can message each other, follow people on there, things like that. Okay, how about this one? This is Ask FM, okay? You can post, I wrote some notes here, okay? You can post anonymous comments and questions to a person's profile. So if a person has an Ask FM profile, anybody can write notes to them or comment on their profile anonymously. So you wouldn't know who is saying that. This is one of the most um, popular apps where a lot of cyberbullying takes place, okay? It is increasingly being used to communicate abusive language, bullying language, and sexualized content. Why do you think? Because it's all anonymous, right? So a person doesn't realize this. Can you block it? Can you block it? A person on there? I'm not sure. I don't have it to tell you the truth. You can, can you block the app? I know that you can go on and block certain apps and you can you know, delete certain things and you have your own parental controls on things. Um, I don't know if you can block somebody. I would assume you could, but I'm not, I'm not certain. Because okay? it's not an app that, I regular, that I've used and had that experience. Okay? But I just know that these things do happen, okay? Um, okay. And the next one here, how about this one? Twitter, everybody usually, this is a pretty common one, right? People comment, like if there's something happening in the news or just random things, right? People post it on Twitter, people comment, it's a public thing, right? Um, you can follow certain people, you can read their Twitter accounts, it's really popular in following um, like celebrities, right? And seeing what they're tweeting about, things like that. Okay, so that that's pretty much summarizes the those apps. I want to go quickly over um, some things that are happening online, that are happening on the internet that is becoming more and more commonly used, okay? So like I mentioned earlier, sexting, right? It's being used a lot. Our phones, our um, tablets, electronics are being used to send inappropriate photos, right? Or videos, things like that to each other. Um, I caution students with this, right? A lot of times they think that they're in a committed relationship with someone, right? And they've um, decided to take the step and do those, send those kinds of uh, texts to each other, okay? I do want to share something with you folks. And I share this with the students as well. We want to be really careful when it comes to that type of texting, okay? And a lot of times this is why we talk about it as well is so you know how you have your photos and your videos app right on your phone where all your photos and videos are? So there are also security photo apps. And what that means is you can have an app that looks like a calculator. I used to have it on my phone. Um, it looks like a calculator. It works like a calculator. 
But if I punched in a certain code, a secret photo app opened up. And I could store videos and pictures and nobody could see it. And there was actually a panic button on there. And it actually advertised, if someone's coming that you don't want them to see what's in here, you can press panic and it'll automatically go back out into calculator mode. Those apps exist. There are many different kinds besides the calculator one that I just mentioned. Okay? So, um, sometimes, like I share with students, we may share photos and we may think, well, the person agreed to delete it, right? The person said they would delete it. Well, we've had some situations where, in fact, things hadn't been deleted, they had been stored in these secret photo vaults, and then later shared out of retaliation when the relationship went bad, okay? So that's just one of the things that's happening a lot lately that we also need to uh, be aware of. Um, Cyberbullying. Cyberbullying has increased tremendously. I know everybody's heard a lot about it, okay? But I want to just tell you a real life story that happened here a couple years ago, okay? So we had a student, and this has to, this ties in with the sexting thing as well, okay? Um, when, a, when a student talks to you about feeling bullied, or you know, a lot of times students will say, everybody knows, right? But you don't understand, everybody knows now. They're not exaggerating. See, because before, even when I was like in high school, right? You could say everybody knows, and you would think the whole school knows, right? Or maybe all my friends know, and that's bad, don't get me wrong. But that was kind of the extent of it, right? Now, a couple years ago, we had a situation where somebody had posted a nude photo of a student and they had shared it out to contacts all of the person's contacts on their school by that afternoon when school had let out there was a school in another district and all of the students there had also received that picture of a student who attends a school in another district so sometimes when you hear students say things like everybody knows they're not necessarily exaggerating because nowadays the ability to attack someone has increased and expanded just because of the ability that we can utilize in social media. Posting things, texting things, messaging things, secretly so it's not on the phone, right? So a student or somebody can say, no, it's not on their phone, they didn't send a text. Well, maybe they're using a different messaging app to do so, <coughs> right? It's all possible. And it's happening more than we realize. Okay, kids are being, comments are made, things are being said, they're feeling attacked, okay? Cyber stalking, there are definitely a lot, there is definitely that happening here in Hilo. A lot of times people, and I tell this to the students as well, you think this is Hilo, small town, it doesn't happen here. That's the, that's the kind of stuff that happens on the mainland. No, it absolutely happens here. There are people who are dangerous, who set up fake social media accounts with an intention to prey on our students, okay? Human trafficking is something that is happening more and more frequently and it occurs on our island. And a lot of times this can be used, social media is used as a venue to build relationships with youth, to build trust, and ultimately the student becomes a victim, okay? Um, because many times maybe they get them to share naked photos or inappropriate types of videos and different things like that. And then they can use those things to threaten the youth, to say, now if you don't do this, when I'm asking, I have this and I'm going to share it, okay? So those kinds of things can be used as well. And that also goes into kind of like revenge porn. People use it for that as well. Um, there's all kinds of hacks that we know about, right, that can happen. We've had that also happen a lot where students are accused of um, bullying someone, turns out it wasn't their account, someone created a fake account in their name, use it against other students. So these are just all things that, are, that, that happen and that we need to be aware of so that way we can have conversations with our youth about appropriate use of, of social media, that way you can have the knowledge of what's out there and what's available and how we can appropriately use these things. Um, <coughs> And then also we talk a lot about unprofessional social media behavior, okay? So maybe they don't go out and 
do some of those other things. But maybe some of their social media posts aren't necessarily appropriate. Maybe they're they're degrading someone, right? Or maybe they're um, putting up some, I don't know, pictures maybe that you think are inappropriate or of concern. We also share with the students that colleges now also look at their social media accounts. Workplaces will look at their social media accounts as they apply for these places, as, as even like certain banks, financial institutions, they will look, they're asking for access to things like your social media account so they can see what, what's your character like, what kind of things do you post, are you someone that they want to represent, right? So it does impact them. Sometimes, um, sometimes students tend to think, you know, like in the moment, like right now, this is so important to me, and, and they don't realize that it can affect them for years to come, right? Because they have this idea that if I delete it, it's gone. But it's not, okay? It's able to be found, it's able to come up again, and these things can impact them for years to come. Um, internet addiction is something that's being more widely studied, and is actually listed in the DSM-5, okay? And that's, that's I mean, they're seeing there's actually, we're seeing that there is, more to this problem than just simple all day on the internet a lot. So there's actually something that's being researched right now and it's being called IAD, internet addiction, okay? Disorder, internet addiction disorder, okay? And that means you have this, just like how you do like with substance abuse, for example, where people think of addiction when it comes to substances. You don't think of addiction when it comes to internet. Well, I work with a group of about 30 students and we work on different projects, and I was talking to them one day, because we're talking about challenges, right? We're disciplining ourselves, and challenging ourselves, and so I was, we were coming up with ideas. So I was like, okay, how about like for 24 hours, no like social media? Oh my gosh. Their response was like, what are you crazy? I'd rather go without food. I was like, what? You know, we're no teenagers, right? They're known as being hungry, right? And they're like, no, I'll skip, I'll skip. I'm, I'm not quitting that, because I have to maintain my streaks. Right? Does anybody know what streaks are? Yeah, yes, she does, yeah. <laughs> streaks, right? You maintain that, yeah, you get so many, you want to keep up with your numbers, all those kinds of things. It's important to you, right? So they're, they don't want to give up those things because maintaining themselves on social media is like how it used to be all about your reputation, right? You think on campus, right? You have a, reputa rep yeah, a reputation. But you also have a social media reputation. So it's not only about maintaining who you are at school or with your friends, they're also concerned about maintaining their social media um, popularity, reputation, things like that. So our students are dealing with a lot more things than any of us did when it comes to that social emotional type of connection. That ability of connecting with someone, that ability of knowing, am I liked, am I not liked, do I get along with this group, am I accepted, right? It seems like, oh, well, you know, you're, you're fine at school, you have friends, but it, it expands much further than that because there's social media involved now too. So kids are not only maintaining who they are in person in front of people, but they're trying to maintain a, who they are in social media. So that's about all that I have. Does anybody have any questions? Sometimes we just have to have the conversation. 
and explain things like and do research, look it up, look up this stuff. You will find information just like I shared with you about these apps. And then it can be a conversation starter about why you're concerned. You know, I think sometimes expressing more where your heart's coming from about why you're concerned is sometimes a stronger message <coughs> as opposed to don't do it. Oh, no, kids can use it. Yeah. Well, it says you do, but they adjust their age to um, meet that requirement. Yes. 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 Adults can engage with you and use vice versa. Yeah. <coughs> Somebody have a, you have a question? You have to raise Earlier, your hand was raised. No? No. Okay. Yes? How do you solve the internet addiction? Sorry? How do you solve the internet addiction? Well, research is still being done on that. If you look up in the DSM-4 where it talks about AID disorder, it's still, there's still being research, right? Because this is new. Having the internet at your disposal, right, is very new. Right? I know it doesn't seem new, but it, it is, right? in comparison to all the other disorders that are out there. So I think learning to um, set time limits, learning to um, discipline yourself, and it starts with, with home, right? It starts with parents. Like I know with my son, right? If I tell him, like, get off your tablet, but he's little, so he has, just has his little tablet, but he'd be like, oh, mom, you're on yours, right? So I know that it starts by my example. It starts by me not having the phone next to me while we're eating dinner. It starts with me not having the phone right next to me um, when we're hanging out watching a movie or whatnot. So sometimes I'll put the ringer on really loud and I'll put it like on the table or on the counter away from us. Just so that way he knows in that moment I'm present, more present with him than I am with my with my device. You know? Does that make sense? Yes, and that's all good too. I mean, I think I think setting those limits, and you know what's really good? This is what I went to one presentation um, that I went to. One of the, the lady who was presenting, she talked about writing up a contract. So all of her kids that have a phone, they have a contract they have to sign. Okay, and it clearly says on there what's expected what chores are being done in return for the service of having a phone, <laughs> and also what, what's the repercussions when things are not met, or when it's not being abided by those time limitations, or whatever it might be, what the repercussions of those are. So I think clear boundaries is important, right? And to me, it, it's, it's good to set boundaries, because these students are gonna have to live within boundaries for the rest of their life, right? When you have a job, when you go to college, Right? You always have boundaries that you have to work within. So learning to, to handle that while you're young and while you're under the care of somebody who loves you is the best time to do it. To learn that, you know what, in every part of your life, you're always going to have somebody setting a boundary or giving you a limitation. So it's better to learn this now than wait until you're 30 and realizing I have to do what my boss says. <coughs> Any other questions? Thank you so much.